Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the final presser here at the Clayton Hotel as we get set for a great night of championship boxing this Saturday at the SSE Arena here in Belfast, Northern Ireland. It is all being brought to you by Frank Warren on behalf of Queensberry Promotions in association with Bob Arum's Top Rank Incorporated and MTK Global, along with their great sponsors, 32 Red and Foot Asylum. Well, at this time, it is my distinct pleasure to introduce to you the host of today's press conference. He is the voice of BT Sport Boxing, the great John Rawling. Thank you very much. What can I, how do I follow that? Well, thank you very much for all coming along today. Another fantastic turnout for our press conference here for what promises to be another great bill and entertainment here in Belfast, which many people, I think, are starting to recognize for what it is as being maybe the best boxing city that we've got in the British Isles. It really is fantastic coming over here. Special atmosphere, and I think that's kind of underlined by the number of reporters, uh, television cameras, and uh, a fair number of fans who are here as well who are going to make it a great occasion on Saturday night. And I think we're probably as well to start uh, with, uh, as anybody, with uh, the man who is uh, so much a part of uh, Belfast Boxing. Let's hear first of all from Jamie, brother of Michael, and uh, looking forward to uh, another great Belfast night, eh? I thought you were going to say Megalor. Um, yeah, I can't wait. It's fantastic. It's, as I said before, it's a, a boxing fan's wet dream. Um, the, the fates on the undercard are, are they, they could tap any bill across the UK. Tyrone McKenna and um, Jack Catchell is, is, is on the verge of something big. Both of them, if they win, whoever wins is on the verge of something big. Johnny Coyle and, and Lewis Benson on the undercard. And I think Tyrone McCulloch's fate is going unnoticed, as well as the, 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 the All-Irish dust-up, which is what all the Irish fans would like to see. And uh, I guess you must be proud and excited as well about uh, seeing your brother back topping the bill. Shit myself, not no, <laughs> more than anything. But it's, um, it's brilliant. Uh, uh, he deserves it. He's, he's came a long, hard way from, from, uh, from Rio and stuff that's happened since there. And you know, he's, he's proven himself to be a global star, not just an Irish star or a star in America, a star globally, going to Australia and um, competing all around the world. It, it, this now is the start of big things to come, hopefully in Belfast and in Ireland. How much of a, of a buzz around the city is the Jamie, for Michael being back and for what, for a lot of people, will be first chance to see him live for a fair, fair, fair time? Yeah, it's, um, we just walked through the, the, the street there last night and the many people stopping and kind of excited for the, for, the, for the night ahead and I think the warm weather, warm weather adds that everyone's had a drink or two and they're kind of, they're a bit rowdy and they're, they're, they're getting excited even more so it's, it's, um, it's, it's, it's well deserved, it's, it's long time coming and hopefully now Saturday night he goes in there, puts on a show and, and puts a statement down of where he, where he tends to be. Well all the fighters are here including what promises to be an outstanding uh, undercard. Let's start first of all with the matchup between uh, Tommy uh, Coyle, uh, Johnny Coyle I beg your pardon and Lewis Benson which uh, is one of those fights which uh, it's the O must go, both undefeated and both fancying the task. Let's start uh, with Johnny from Essex, 18-0, Southpaw, and this potentially for you, Johnny, big breakthrough fight. Yeah, first of all, I want to say thank you very much to MTK, my management team, for getting me on the show. Uh, I think I've been knocking on the door a long time now for big fights, and uh, I'm looking forward to Saturday night. Happy to be part of the show, Mick Collins' homecoming. Yeah, I'm just, I've had a great camp. Looking forward to putting on a show Saturday night. Twice you've been Haringey box, uh, box Cup champion in years gone by and undefeated now in a pro career, which you started in, uh, where are we, 2013. What do you know about Lewis as a fighter? To be honest with you, I don't really know too much about him. He ain't done much as a pro. He's 
keeps raging on about his amateur career, but we've all got amateur backgrounds, you know. I've won national titles myself. I've, bought, I've represented my country myself and won gold medals. We're in a we're in a totally different game now, you know. This this is the pro ranks. It's championship rounds. That's a big difference. This uh, fight is going to be ten rounds at super lightweight, and uh, Lewis also undefeated. To my left here, undefeated in ten fights from Edinburgh. And uh, just to, first of all, tell us a, about a, a little story which I heard about you as a kid, where you said to your school teacher and your mates, "I'm going to be, I'm going to be a professional boxer, and you're all going to talk about me one day." And they, uh, they just didn't believe you. Um, that was back in high school. I got laughed at for saying that. So I hope she tunes in on Saturday night and see me winning this fight. It was uh, what, what was what was the class that you were that you were told that it was my German class. Who needs German, eh? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you've you've been undefeated now in those ten fights. I know last time we we showed you the television cameras are there. Barry Jones was particularly impressed with your your boxing skill. Do you reckon that's going to be a key? Yeah, I believe I'm a better boxer than Johnny Coyle and on the night everyone's going to see that. I've got a game plan that my coach Terry McCormack's gave for me and I'm going to execute it on the night. And you've been a, a good amateur, Scottish amateur champion in, uh, in years gone by. How are you finding the pro game? Um, yeah, I had a big amateur career. I had over 100 fights, but as a pro, I've not really done the rounds yet. I've only done six rounders, so this is my big test and sink or swim so I'm ready for it and I'm sure I think you're going to be sinking I think yeah. you're going to be sinking you think? yeah I know no nah, no chance I know man I know you're going to be sinking you can't even make the weight who can't why would you I can't wanna, make why, the weight why would I want to make championship weight it's the reason why it's called championship it's two yeah. pound heavy yeah. yeah you got rejected for a title why would I want to make championship weight for nothing what, what's because on the, the winner will what's go on, on you're, listen you're, you're not great record uh, you're not good, good name to have on my record what what what's on the line for me? Right, you've got if everything to gain from this fight. You keep saying about levels. Right? Yeah, if I'm you're a level, you, I'm going to show that. If I'm you're a level, night. you'd be fighting someone big, like yeah, I, 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 I'm, asking, like I'm asking for big fights, but unfortunately, no. I've got to beat bombs like you on the way. Bombs, come there. We should, see, there, we there, see, there we'll should see. have been a title on the line, but you got rejected for a title. The I got rejected the, for a title. Let me see. The governing bodies don't even want you to box for the title. I got rejected because I've only been scheduled for six rounds, and I'm going to ping you. A <laughs> little bit of edge to it, a little bit of edge. Johnny, uh, I know uh, Alan, who coaches you, he reckons that you've got that little bit more experience and that you'll be the tougher guy and that's going to be key. Yeah, when the, when the shit hits the fan, Benson's going to know that he's in a fight, you know. He keeps raging on about he's going to ping me, he's going to outbox me, this and that. I am going to ping you. Them spiral, them spiral legs ain't going to be able to run all night, you know. We're in the championship rounds, as I said, and I'll, I'll get him, I'll get him. You dance with journeyman. Sorry? You dance around the ring with journeyman. I'm a proper fighter, and you'll you see that. Who have you thought to be a proper fighter? I've, I've boxed no one. There's actually you know, no one. I've boxed over a lot better people than you. You've over three I've, I've had a few tests. Anyone. I've had a few tests. Yeah, you've, over you've three fought, rounds. Yeah. Over three yeah, rounds. Yeah, well, that's my amateur. That's my amateur pedigree. You keep going on about your amateur pedigree. That's my amateur pedigree. Look what I can do to great fighters over three rounds. This is the pro ranks. I've exactly. gone on. I've had nearly 20 fights. You've had nothing. You've, you've had 10 you fights. fought 20 journeymen. I fought not, 10. No, I fought 20. No, well, sorry. Sam, Sam sorry, sorry. Sorry. Jason Cook, Paddy Gallagher's. Come on. I do apologize. Really that. Philip over three Bowles rounds. The, Philip Bowles for the seven of your title. That, he, oh, come on, please. <laughs> you've seen the title tonight. Exactly, we will see. We will. We will we see. see. We certainly will see. That's going to be, I think I'm right in saying... You're getting smoked. That's what's happening. We Benson, Benson's smoked. getting smoked. You're smoked. Levels. Face-to-face -face, uh, pictures are going to be interesting a little bit later on. <laughs> and I think that's going to be our opening fight of the evening on the big live broadcast on BT, which is going to be kicking off at uh, half past seven, and it promises to be a real feisty one to start with. Now also here in front of me I think we have uh, Tyrone McCullough. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> could only see, I, could, I could only see the back of your head. <laughs> Tyrone you've got Joe Ham. This is a, a super bantamweight contest and again it's two undefeated fighters. Your ten fights 
and zero. He's 14 and zero. You are amateur rivals and know each other well from uh, right the way through the unpaid ranks to today. It was kind of a, a fight which was always going to happen. Yeah, well, unfortunately I can't kick off like he's doing with Japan because he doesn't have the balls to show up. He doesn't show up to the first press conference either and I'm starting to get very worried he's not going to show up on Saturday. But if he does, he knows he's in trouble, so he does. He's come out with some interesting stuff on social media. Was it? Did I read that he said he was going to melt you? He, he, he wrote something stupid like that, and then uh, I got a few ones back at him, and they blocked me. So uh, I don't know what his game is. And tell us about your last ever amateur fight, because uh, people here might not know what that was about and who you actually faced. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Some ball bag behind me. <laughs> uh, no, I fought uh, McConlon in the Irish Senior Final. Was it 2013 or 2014? Had a good fight with him, but Mc Mc won, so he did. Uh, uh, that's why I'm not highlighting the show. <laughs> and being on the being on the same bill now as a guy who's obviously a good friend of yours, it must be a, a nice feeling to be here in your, in Belfast. Uh, fighting on the bill where he's topping it. Uh, that's exactly it. We were, we were good mates before we fought. Like we were growing up with each other in the Irish team and uh, we rema remain mates after it's boxing. We know each other inside out, so uh, I'm delighted to be part of the show. Now, what about, uh, what about Joe Ham on Saturday night? He's undefeated in 14 fights, Glaswegian. What do you reckon is going to happen? Well, it's... It's a great fight, so it is. Um, like you say, he's undefeated, I'm undefeated, and uh, obviously I don't think either of us have fought any serious caliber of opponent yet. So it'll be our first real test for the both of us, And uh, but I'm very keen to announce myself on the big stage. And it's got an eliminator status, I'm told, for the British Championship, as well as the Celtic title at, uh, at stake. Yeah, but I'm just uh, focused on Saturday night for now, and we'll cross that bridge when I come to it. OK, well, we wish you well, and I'm sure that's uh, going to be another tremendous fight. Some people are saying, well, the bookies are certainly saying, that this is the most level fight on the bill, Tyrone. Well, the bookies are there, they lose money, so they are. Well, I agree. We look forward, look forward to that one. Now, I think uh, John O'Carroll against Declan Geraghty is a fight which... Uh, Everybody's been talking about. They've not been shy about uh, having having a few words. They've they've fought before, back in 2014, four rounder, and on that occasion, Declan was ahead and got himself disqualified in the last round. Jono won it. He's undefeated. He'll say undoubtedly that it's going to be more of the same. That he's going to win. Declan had a good win against uh, Johnny Quigley. Uh, Jono had a split decision against Quigley, so you know he pays you money and, and takes your chance. It looks like a great matchup. Jono, first of all, let's uh, let's hear uh, from you, shy and understated as ever, no doubt. <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, first of all, he wasn't winning that force for you. Uh, I put up the second round for everyone to see the last one, and little Declan Gardy there went like Bambi when I hit him with a right hook, and his legs went, and. Um, yeah, listen, I won that round, and then he got points taken off in the, what was it, fourth round? So yeah. that's an eight ten round. So if you want to go, go that way, then I was winning the fight. You know what I mean? You can't lose when you won the second round and then an eight ten round in a four-rounder. So the only person who constantly said I lost that fight was Declan Garrity and all his yes men that he has around him. So um, I'm looking forward to setting this straight. And I won't be leaving up to the judges. Declan Gardy is getting knocked out. Simple. Mate, you can't stop traffic. Will you stop it? You have two stoppages. I have fucking, what, 13, 14 fights or something. You have two uh, stoppages. Can't stop traffic. I don't Mate, need to stop traffic. Stop I'm going to break you up. Okay. This is going to be an easy night's work for me. I don't know what them bookies are thinking. It's, uh, I genuinely believe. Mate, it's embarrassing. This, you're this undefeated. You're a champion. And you're still under, the underdog going to the fight on the bookies' cards. It's embarrassing. Oh, it was 14 it's embarrassing, to one. mate. I was 14 to 1 underdog to win prize for her after battling you. And I still won that, didn't I? So, bookies don't know anything. Mate, you're getting broke up. It's not even going to go 12 rounds, so it's going to be it's gonna be an easy enough night for me. I have the game plan down to a T. And uh, 
that goes in for a hard line. Trust me. Declan, how, uh, without giving uh, exact tactics away, what makes you so certain that you win this fight? I'm looking fresh tonight. I'm going to look fresh Saturday night. He's oh going to get a boxing lesson. He is. I fought his game the last fight and still beat him. Not, every, not all my yes men said it. The scorecard said it. Yeah, because the his game, I fought, when, yeah, when someone gets a squad of five, the He'll fight the last time, and I'm still beating you. You're going to fight my game Saturday night. What, Ruin? Catch the chicken, ah, is mate, it? Don't Catch worry. the pigeon. You'll see Saturday. Listen, mate, you can't run for 12 rounds. It's going to be an easy night. I won't run for 12 rounds either. That's the only thing you can do. Run. Mate, I can box, you can't box. All right, we'll Get see. Get a pressure for it. That's you all you have, mate. You're I'm going to actually outbox you just for the laugh, <laughs> just to show the people that I can box. I'm going to outbox you, I'm going to outfoot you, and then I'm going to stop you. Simple. You know what you are? You're a compulsive lawyer, mate. Cool. For four <laughs> years, for four years, so you've been lying. Says Declan Gary, the compulsive lawyer, but your fake little Rolex. Show us the watch, dude. For four years, you've been lying, yeah? You're torn around. Close your 50 quid off and looky looky, didn't you? You're going to let me talk, or do you want to talk first? Well, I'd rather talk over you, but go on. Talk, I'll wait until you're finished. Go on, I'll let you talk. For four years you've been going on about this, that, and the other. You didn't want to Hold on, don't let him on. talk. Four years we've been going on. Mate. Declan Gary, he's the only one that's been mate, going on. No, you haven't been calling for this for you. I'm the champion, like you said. He's the one calling for this for you. You should have kept your name out of your mouth. And you might even get knocked out on Saturday. You, every time you did an interview, you said you didn't want to fight me. You didn't want to fight me. You don't because want to fight you're me. Nobody. Because you wanted to fight you. Because you're nobody. Want to fight you want to fight you. I'm going backwards. And I'm accepting this oh, fight okay. just so I can set the record straight so you shut up speaking my name. Mate, you're a compulsive lawyer, first of all, alright? You turn around and say you can make featherweight easy. Can. But then you're saying, you're right. then, then I'm getting told that you're saying, I'm as big as a uh, Lloyd Welder. So you're talking, sure. I'm going to come in as a Lloyd Welder to bother you. I come in as a Lloyd Welder because I'm a big super featherweight. You don't come in as a big, uh, you don't come in as, if you're not a big super featherweight, you're not, uh, you're not going to be coming at Lloyd, Lloyd Welder way. Then, or at that, or you're contradicting yourself saying you can make fed away. No, because you have no clue how to make weight. That's you're a compulsive lawyer, that's all it is. You have no clue I'm how to make weight. You were saying last week, I'm on championship weight. If you were on weight last week, then that's stupid. Because I ain't on weight last week. I was nice and strong last week. Hey. I ain't draining my muscles for nothing. Hey, you didn't water I'm gonna, you're yeah, gonna, I'm going to take that water off, and, and then I'm, I'm going to come in a welterweight, and I'm going to bother you. Rounds, you do you, you do. Then you get Cooking, this, have you got a good battery on your camera? I've never dived, dived out in the fight, so I don't know what oh. Declan Gary is talking about. But the only time... You quickly fought, you dropped down and then came back a little bit. Dropped down and came back? You came, you That's called being win. smart, because okay. I've done 12 rounds. You wouldn't know anything about okay. it. Okay, let's see if Saturday about 12 rounds. The only time you, you were up in Belfast for a good show is when you got knocked out. And it's going to be no different this time. I think, it's, uh, I think it's fair to say that, once again, there's a, a little bit of edge on this one. And uh, it's one I'm really looking forward to. And uh, he's the betting favourite. The bookies reckon that Jono's going to win it. Declan, as you hear, is convinced that he's going to win it, as he is. You get so that wrong. The bookies have me favourite. Let the bookies have me favourite. Oh, that's changed from when I last checked it. I'm favourite. I beg your pardon. There we go. He says he's the betting favourite, so uh, that uh, puts me in my place nicely. <laughs> ja Jamie. <laughs> I'm not going to argue with him. Just, uh, just tell us about this as a fight, as a match-up. I mean, this is, uh, this is a special one, isn't it? Um, the, uh, is you all got batteries still on your phone here because they didn't stop talking, but no, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant fit. Um, the first one, I was, me, me and Michael were ringside for it. It was some fantastic fight, over four rounds. Um, over 12 rounds, it's going to be even better. Sorry, I have to put him on, on the spot right now. Uh, Who do you think was winning that four-round fight? Oh, I know you're not a judge. Jano, you were, I, I had him winning. I Thank you, winning. my man. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate that. It's going to be a good one. And uh, if, uh, if the bookies... Jano, tell well, me, what did you say on social media? I'm going to retire if I beat you. What? If I beat you, you say I'm going to retire. I'm going to retire you when I beat you. you You're the only one who played and going to have three losses, mate. Well, if I beat you, what's going to happen to you? It's going to be another one. Nothing. Uh, no one's going to happen to me. Right. Because I'll have one loss. You already have two and you're still, I'm, I'm still you. giving you well, a Ask me what happens if you beat me. What? Um, You're going into a tournament. Um, mate, That's what I happens. I will not get beaten. I will not get beaten. When, <laughs> when I beat you, you're oh, going man. into journeyman oh, mode. That's what happens. I'll tell you. You don't need to ask you the question. Nah, when I beat you, you're you going into a journeyman. And that's it. Nah, Enjoy those four grand blading paychecks you're going to get. Four grand, mate. Another interesting face-to-face -face photograph coming up in a few minutes. I'll point out where the communion suit off you as well, by the way. What? 
What did he just say? About time you took a communion suit off from the last press conference as well, Pat. What, when you were in your fake Hugo Boss? <laughs> <laughs> you got out of Moore Street? Not Come not on to yourself, you little muppet. Fake Hugo Boss, put it like that. Did you hear this fella? You were in a tracksuit, you were in a t-shirt, mate. Fake Hugo oh, Boss. Same I'm looking fake fresh ass. now and you ain't, mate. I'm, I'm looking fresh, fresh now. Listen, no one cares, mate. No cares and fuck No one cares what you look like, boy. pretty boy. I'm going to slap the hell out of you. You won't be pretty after Saturday night. Nothing. You ain't going to deal with nothing. Two, but two Dublin boys get together. This is, uh, this is the outcome. Going to be another tremendous fight, as indeed I think a lot of people would say about the uh, WBO Intercontinental Super Lightweight title fight between Jack Catterall and Belfast's Tyrone McKenna. Both undefeated. Jack, 21 fights. And he's from Chorley, Tyrone from right here in Belfast. 16 wins, no defeats, and just the one draw. On paper, it is going to be a really fascinating, a really fascinating showdown. Let's uh, hear from Francis Warren, first of all, who's uh, managing and representing Jack Catterall. Not managing, I beg your pardon. Representing, promoting. Tell us, about, tell us about him as a fighter and about why you think this is a special one. Um, Jack as a fighter, I think, is, well, I believe one of the top five most technically gifted fighters in the UK. Um, I think some of the developments he's, he made, you know, um, early doors, been fighting Nathan Bruff and Tom Stalker, um, impressed everybody. Um, and then since going over to, to Jamie, um, I'm sure he's going to be keen to show everybody what, uh, what, 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 what progress he's made since then as well. Um, Jack's been rated in the top four of the WBO for what feels like an age now. Um, and with the title being, you know, being changing hands and, 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 you know, and Maurice Hook have uh, beaten Terry Flanagan a couple of weeks back, um, unfortunately, I think it's going to be you know, a bit of a wait to get Hooker on board again. So in the meantime, Jack just wants to be out competing in, in tough fights. Um, and this certainly is one coming to Tyrone's backyard and, and, uh, and, and, and good looking to do the business in front of a new crowd. Um, and setting up a few big fights you know, later on in the year with the likes of O'Hara. I'm sure Johnny Coyle's got one eye on, on this fight. No disrespect to Lewis, but you know, and, you know, I'm sure he has as well. Um, but I think you know, Jack, for me, is one of the guys that deserves to be in world title fights. Um, but obviously he's got to overcome Tyrone at the weekend. And Tyrone fighting in front of the Belfast crowd. You've got a big uh, height reach advantage, yeah. Tyrone. What do, you, uh, what do you make of this? I mean, it's a tremendous fight for you, a great opportunity. Yeah, 100%. Um, a lot of people have come up to me this week and they're saying it's not an easy fight for you. You could have went an easier way and stuff, but if I wanted it easy, I'd have done a different sport. Um, I've never been given anything easy in boxing. Um, I've had a few pull-outs the last fights, and I've always replaced them with harder fights, I believe. I mean, Otto Upton said it would be too slick for me. Ronald Greedo said that he would be uh, too relentless. A few Dublin guys were going to be too strong for me. I beat them all. Uh, so when the phone, came in, or phone call came in for Jack Harrell, I accepted it straight away because I'm not in this game for easy. Easy for the weak, easy for the unconfident, and easy for people who don't believe in themselves. I believe in myself, and I want to be world champion. You were so. supposed to have been fighting Phil Sutcliffe. He wound up with that training injury, did his jaw, um, how much of a different task do you have fighting this guy? Um, do you know what? I'm used to the people putting it straight away, or like close to the fight, so I just keep concentrating on the, the opponent at hand. Jack, obviously, is a talented fighter, and no doubt it's going to be a tough fight for me. So I'm uh, going to have to put on a career performance, or career best performance, so that's what I'm expecting to do on Saturday night. You've sparred each other before yeah. in the, in the run-up to Jack's mm -hmm. fight against Tyrone Nurse. How did the sparring go? The spar was, was sweet. Um, I wouldn't say there was much of a winner. I think we were both starting our, our comps that week, so it wasn't like we were both on fire at that stage, but um, I wouldn't read much, too much into the, the spar. Spar to spar at the end of the day. Uh, some people spar good, some people don't. It's who turns up in the night of the fight and performs. <laughs> And I believe I'm going to. What's, what's the key to this one? Because uh, Jack's a safe distance away from me, so I can, I can say that his critics say he's a bit one-paced. One-paced. I don't know what. I don't read into the previous fights. 
It's it's what happens on the net, and, and I'm able to adapt to anything. If he wants to box, he can box. If he wants to fight, he can fight. Um, everyone knows I love a war, but I'd like to, to maybe show that I can box a bit better in this this one coming up. I know it's going going to be have to be switched on for the full fight because um, Jack is a, a world class fighter. But as a man, I'm going to prove it on Saturday. Jamie Moore is the uh, trainer of Jack, who's sitting alongside him in front of me. And uh, Jamie, tell us about tell us what it's been like training and working with this fellow in the uh, in the months that you've that you've had him. He's had a couple of fights which really haven't shown what you've been working on as yet. Yeah, it's always difficult when you first get to work with someone, and you know for. Obviously, the level of opposition what Jack's been used to fighting, he's gradually been stepping it up. And then we've, because we was first started to work together, we we didn't want obviously a difficult fight straight away. So um, Jack dismantled him and took him took him out quick fashion, which would have been expected to do. But it's not as easy to do that when you know you've got new surroundings and new people around you. So he's been a dream to work with. He, any trainer will tell you the same thing when you get the opportunity to work with such a talented fighter like Jack is. It makes your job ten times easier, um, but I think you're right in what you're saying, John. I think he has been a little bit one-paced in the past, and that was one of the things what we have been working on about putting sort of gears in there and, and knowing when to step it up, knowing when to rest and relax. And um, I think you're going to you see a different level. Jack's going to take it to a different level. He's, he's showing massive improvements over the last sort of five months or so since he's been in the gym. He's been around a lot of good fighters, which you always pick up things. You know, you pick up on, on being around, surrounded by good fighters, you, it brings you on as well. So um, I've known Tyrone for a long time. Um, you know, it, it's always a difficult situation when you're up against someone who you know. But the first time I was ever in a corner, I was in the corner, corner with Tommy Coyle against Derry Matthews. So it, it, I actually trained with myself, so I'm, I'm used to being in this situation. At the end of the day, it's a sport, and at the end of it all, regardless of the winner, we shake hands and we move on. So, uh, so it's going to be a great fight, and I'm just glad the fans get to see a good fight. What's the key for you, Jamie? Why do you think that Jack's the superior guy? I just, I, I believe in my guy. I think he's, you've not scratched the surface with him, I promise you. You've, by far, you've, ne you've not seen the best of Jack Carroll yet, and over the next three or four years, you're going to see him go on and on. I think, you know, talking about world title fights for a 24-year-old sometimes is, is premature. You shouldn't be doing that. But with someone like Jack, he's certainly ready for that step up. And, um, and like I say, I think you've got, you've got to give him credit because the reason this fight is taking place is that he had a fast one-round blowout. He didn't want the training camp to go to waste. He was asking me to for, see if we could get him out again in the next sort of month or so. And then, you know, take it after Tyrone. He didn't have to take a difficult fight like this at short notice either. But the universe went to work and they put these two guys together for whatever reason. And then we've got a great fight. Well, let's uh, hear from, from Jack. I mean, uh, Tyrone... You know all about him, you've sparred with him, you've watched him fight, you know his style. How do you, what are your thoughts on this contest? Yeah, I'm just more than anything excited for the fight. <clears throat> Obviously, the last two fights have only gone the one round, so uh, I know Tyrone's going to be a tough fight come Saturday night, but it'll be a chance for me to, to showcase what we've been working on in the gym and put on a great fight for everybody. Do you think that we're going to be seeing him out working you? Uh, definitely not. I think uh, a lot of people have said that I've boxed at one pace before, <clears throat> before but again, uh, it's different when you're actually in the ring with somebody. It's about how you control the fight. Uh, Tyrone <laughs> will say the same. I believe I can outbox him and outfight him, so uh, that's what makes an exciting fight. Have you fought somebody as tall as him before, uh, professionally? Because he's, what, six foot one? That's going to give you problems, quite obviously, with getting inside that long reach. Yeah, I boxed Nathan Bruff in 2014. I think he was the same height, six foot one. So uh, the height ain't going to be an issue. There's always, there's always a way to beat somebody. So I believe I've got the tools to do it. And what's your thoughts of when you were in the ring sparring together? What, what are your memories of that? Uh, I can't remember it too well. It was uh, October last year. Uh, again, you don't take too much away from sparring. 
Uh, it's different when you've got an eight-ounce glove on. So what do you, what's your prediction for this fight? Is it going to be going long, or do you think you're going to stop him, or what do you reckon? Uh, you always want the stoppage. I want to put on a good fight for everybody, but uh, no matter whether it goes, the, the rounds that I stop him, I just believe I get come out on Saturday night victorious. Last word on this one with uh, Tyrone. People uh, from the outside might just say you're really being shoved in at the deep end for this one. Yeah, um, yeah people do say that, but I know um, I believe in myself. My team believes in me. My coach, I have a brilliant coach in Danny Vaughan. Um, we worked hard for his fit. We've, uh, we've been put through hard enough tests with, with, with my last three or four fights, so um, I think I'm ready for the step up. If I'm not ready, then we'll find it on night, but I believe, and my team believe that this is the right move. Francis, one more word on this, uh, I guess, our principal support fight. It's got all the makings, hasn't it? It certainly has. Um, obviously, uh, as we've said, Tyrone didn't have to take this fight, um, so you know he's got everything to, everything to gain. Um, and Jack's um, you know, on the cusp of, 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 as I said, challenging for or getting there at about, thereabouts for a world title. <coughs> Um, so it's just got, got every, everything, you know, everything going for it. This fight, um, and you know, got a, the the, the, the favourite is the away fighter, which you don't really find too often. So you know, it's going to be very intriguing to watch. Um, I think with uh, with a real treat. Absolutely, and uh, the Belfast crowd is going to be a factor. Maybe does that does that worry you at all, Jack? Just fighting on uh, on somebody else's turf to the extent that you are here. <coughs> Uh, definitely not. I think since we landed yesterday, I've had a warm welcoming off everybody over here. Uh, they seem like real boxing people, and I think more than anything, uh, we're both getting the respect for, for taking the fight and putting on a good fight for everybody. So I hope everyone enjoys the fights on Saturday. It will make no difference to me once that bell goes, uh, where the ring is in the world. Thank you very much for that. That's uh, our principal support fight, which takes us nicely on to the main event. Michael back here in his seventh professional fight, uh, eighth professional fight, I beg your pardon, fighting uh, for uh, a ten-rounder against Adilson Dos Santos of Sao Paulo in Brazil, who unfortunately, for whatever reason, can't be with us today. Uh, he has uh, a record of 19 wins, four defeats, 25 years old. He's got 10 wins inside three rounds. And Michael, I know, has said that this is uh, a little bit of a, an acid test. He's got to come through this and look good. But before we hear from Michael, let's hear from uh, Brad Jacobs, who's uh, a big part of the top rank organization and been working with Michael ever since he turned pro. Tell us a little bit about what it's been like working with this fella. Thanks, John. Well, firstly, I want to say if all these guys fight the way they talk, we're in for a hell of a show on uh, Saturday night. <laughs> so, uh, but... Uh, look, uh, Michael, Jamie, the whole Conlon family, we're thrilled to be involved with them. Uh, they're a terrific bunch. When Michael came out of Rio, the first thing he said was, I want to fight at home. So uh, we made it our business to make sure that that happened. Uh, he's been fighting all over the world, as everyone knows, in front of 50,000 plus in Brisbane, Madison Square Garden, selling out the theater there in his pro debut, unheard of in boxing. Uh, several of Chicago, back in New York, in the big building a few times. So we're just thrilled that we're able to uh, make this happen for Michael, and I know he's excited about it, and uh, uh, we, we couldn't be happier. How do, you, how do you map out the future for, for Michael from here? Because I know it's still early days, undefeated. How long do you think or hope it's going to be before he starts getting up fighting for belts and getting really into world title reckoning? Sure. At the end of the day, that's up to Michael and his team. As, uh, as how quickly they want to move. Uh, but, uh, you know, we have a sort of a history of let's get to it. You know, let's, uh, you know, fighting a 10-rounder, see how he goes there, the distance, move up the competition like he's doing with Dos Santos and move into some sort of a regional title and head for a world title. I, I mean, I'm, I can't believe it be more than one, one and a half years before in that position. Obviously, uh, all the Irish public uh, watch him keenly. How well has he taken off and how much interest is there on the other side of the pond? Very, very much uh, people are aware of Michael. And like I said, uh, selling out uh, the theater at the Madison Square Garden. I mean, there, there are current world champions that cannot do that. 
So uh, you know, his, his awareness over there, his style, the way uh, he presents himself, and uh, just a nice guy. So, uh, so everyone uh, is, is starting to follow him, and the more exposure he's getting on ESPN in the U.S., uh, which, and this event will be on ESPN Plus, which is the digital platform, uh, that just continues to help uh, Michael's exposure. Well, let's hear from Michael. You're back. Put it into words what it's going to be like getting out there once again and fighting in front of a Belfast crowd. First and foremost, I want to thank everybody for coming out today. It's a fantastic turnout for a press conference. Uh, I appreciate everybody here. I'm delighted to be back. You know, it's been a long time since I've boxed in Belfast. 2011, I think, was the last time I was here. And uh, it's really good to be back. And there's going to be a, 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 real, a real buzz, isn't there, about getting out there in front of that crowd? Yeah, it'll be a huge buzz. I've been at uh, Carl Frampton fights and, and many other fights in the Odyssey Arena, and, or the SSC Arena now, sorry. And uh, it's been fantastic. The atmosphere makes the hair stand up in my neck. So you know, I'm expecting the same kind of thing on Saturday evening. And you know, I think once I walk out there, it's, 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 it's game time, and I'm really ready to go. Tell us what it's been like fighting on the road effectively, based in the States. I think you've four times you've fought in New York now and been around the world. It's been great. Top rank have made me feel like New York is my home. And, uh, you know, I, I certainly do feel that when I box there. I, I get great support, obviously, you know, in, in Madison Square Garden. It's a special place to box as well. So, you know, it's been great boxing on the road. I've support all around the world since everything happened in Rio. But, you know, uh, I think New York is, is kind of my home from home. The Rio business, where you were on the wrong end of a stinking decision. I mean, how much did that hurt you? To be honest, I'm not even going to talk about it because it's done, it's over and done with, and, and I'm past that point in my career. Uh, I know everybody goes back to it because they love giving the finger and stuff, but, you know, uh, that's, that's in the past, so I'll forget about that now. But in a sense, it's, it's worked for you because it's propelled you into the professional, professional ranks, and you, you're moving on so impressively. Yeah, I, th I think so, definitely. You know, I think it's probably the best thing that could have happened to me. Uh, as I've boxed in New York, I've, I've held in events already, and there's been Olympic champions on my own undercard. So, you know, I think if you had a won a gold medal, you wouldn't have got as much exposure. I don't want to harp on too much about what went on before, but I, I know the guy, who, the guy who got that decision against you has now turned pro. How much would you fancy the chances of somewhere down the line fancying Vladimir, facing Vladimir Nicotine once again. <laughs> it's something I'm really looking forward to. Uh, top rank kind of went out of the way to sign him because they know it's it's a match that needs to be made. And you know I, I want to thank Top Rank for doing that. Bob Bob for head hunting this guy and getting him um, because that's that's a match I want. Whether it's here in Belfast or whether it's in New York, it doesn't bo bother me as long as I get that rematch. A bit of spice on that one, Brad. Exactly. <laughs> um, Tell us about your opponent and what you know, what you know of him. I've, as I've already said, he's got those 10 wins yeah. inside the distance. When he stepped up to the top level, Jesse Magdalano beat him in a couple of rounds. And uh, people back here might remember that uh, Kid Galahad as well had a, had a win against him. But he's also had some impressive performances. Tell us what you know of him. He's a big puncher. Um, 19 wins, 15 in by KO. So, you know, I've got to be careful. It's, it's definitely a step up. I'm disappointed he didn't turn up today. I don't know what happened to him. Uh, I do hope he turns up on Saturday evening because, you know, I, I was looking for a, a face off today to get a bit of a read on him. But, uh, you know, he's a big guy, tall, long arms, throws a lot of straight punches, but when he throws his hooks, he is dangerous. So, you know, I, I know what to expect. I've worked on a lot of things in training camp, I've had great sparring, and I'm feeling good. Your preparations, you think, are absolutely spot on for this? You ready? I think so. I've, been, I've basically been in training camp since, since January, since I started with Adam. You know, I've, been, I've fought three times now this year already, and you know, this, is, this is definitely a step up in class, but I feel that it's one the fans of Belfast deserve, because if I was to come back here and fight a nobody, they, no one would want to come and, and they wouldn't want to support you, because they know they're boxing and, and they understand it. And uh, here... With your, with your brother supporting as well. It's a, a Conlon occasion and topping the bill in, in Belfast for the first time. Again, just, just put into words once more just how, how proud you are. I'm, I'm hugely mood. Uh, mood. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm immensely proud, definitely, because I've been to so many fates in Belfast and, and, the, and the atmosphere the fans bring is, 
is something that you don't get anywhere else in the world. I've been all around the world boxing. I've lived in different places of the world, and, and there is no place like home for me. Uh, the atmospheres, the people, it's just its unbelievable, and, and I'm really looking forward to it on Saturday evening. It's one which we're all looking forward to massively, of course. As I say, it's going to be broadcast live on BT, and you've heard uh, some, of the, uh, some of the rivalries here. Uh, before we do all the what are promising to be very interesting photographs, uh, before we go down that route, let's see if there are some good questions from the floor. It's all yours, guys. Shout them up. All the lads are here. It's been chilled. It really has been chilled. The atmosphere and, and the people have been great, but there's nothing better than be able to, to sit, sit in your own house and, and chill out on fight week. You know, I'm usually staying in a hotel, stuck in a hotel room maybe. But and in New York, where if you go outside, it's hectic. Here, it's just nice and relaxed, chilled out, and it's probably the most chilled out I've been on a fight week ever. When I, when I came out yesterday for the for the open workout, I was I wasn't expecting. I've been to so many open workouts now. And, I wasn't expecting as big a crowd. It was it was fantastic. Uh, I, I want to thank everybody for coming out that as well because that was great. But yeah, it's it's been a great buzz. And, and, and yesterday kind of got me going. I started to think about the fight a bit more. Things things kind of became real, and uh, it, it just got me excited for Saturday night. I think it just needs to be a clean, clinical, and destructive performance. You know, I think. If I do it that way, if I go in with the kind of assassin mentality, you know, just go in and either take this guy, or if it goes to points, it goes to points, but it has to be clean and destructive. No, you know? Not asking for much there, Michael. <laughs> no, you, you have to expect <laughs> decent stuff from yourself, so I, I definitely think so. Have you got a guard against being overhyped about wanting to please people too much? Yeah, you, you've, got, you've got to think about that. You know, some people do try to please the crowd too much and, and it gets them in trouble. So, you know, I, I'm lucky enough I have a great team around me who, who kind of keep my feet in the ground. Um, there is a lot of hype around me and, and, you know, that does get the fighters' heads. But, you know, if, if I was letting that stuff get to my head, I think my dad would slap the head of me. <laughs> Any more? Do you want to go first? No, go on, ladies first. You go ahead. <laughs> I was just going to say that. Snake. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I've come on big time. You know, Declan has done basically nothing since I fought him last time, other than get knocked out and, and the likes of that. But um, I've come on big time. I've won the European. I've, I've went and won the Intercontinental. And I've won prize fighter. I've fought decent opponents. You know what I mean? Um, I've come on loads. And... <laughs> Not just came on with my fights. I, I'm learning all the time. Like I only started boxing when I was 15, so quite late as an amateur and stuff like that. So, um, right now I'm still feel like I'm learning an awful lot when I'm in the gym. Like it's not like I, I think I know it all and I'm amazingly talented and I'm this that and the other. You know, I, I'm really grounded and I'm I'm still trying to learn as much as possible. So any tips anyone can give me, like I'm I'm taking them all on board and I'm trying to be a better boxer and be a better person and and literally just. Try, try, be, try just make myself proud and make my me, me family proud and everything else, you know what I mean? And I think I'm, I'm getting there. Slowly but surely I'm getting there. Uh, yeah, I've approved. I think both have approved with two different footers from four years ago. Him and me. But uh, that night the performance couldn't really go any worse for me. So I can only get better from that time. Uh, no boxer knows at all. Michael's been there at the Olympics, he's been, and Paddy's been there at the Olympics, and, they, and I believe they still don't think they know it all, they're still trying to improve, including myself and everyone on this table, you never know it all. So, just keep improving, I've, I've got better with the longer rounds, and uh, my last performance was, was a pretty decent performance, it's nowhere near the best, but every foot I'm just trying to up the game, up the opponent, and just get better each fight. Yeah, Karen. Didn't overlook a six foot one. <laughs> <laughs> it's only five, man. 
<laughs> can, I, can I just say, the only people who've ever mentioned the fight for Jack with O'Hara Davis or Terry Flanagan or anyone like that is the media. It's people ask him the question and then he always says, he always says, well, you know, get through this fight, hopefully, fingers crossed, everything goes well, and then I would take that fight. So, so stop feeding. <laughs> <laughs> Any more? Um, no, um, I don't see it as anything at the minute. All I'm concentrating is on Saturday, um, whatever comes after that. Um, if it is a world title or if it's a world title eliminator or a fight with O'Hara Davies to shut his move, uh, bring any of it on. Um, but at the minute, I'm just concentrating on Saturday and getting a win. Any more? Steve? Okay, right, well, we'll do face-to-face uh, -face photographs in a moment or two, and all the lads are here ready to do one-on-one -on -one interviews with those who require them. Thank you very much for coming today. And uh, final word from Francis. I think it's uh, the, uh, the usual uh, drum roll. Drum. There are tickets drum. still available. Sorry, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. Go yeah, so there are still a few tickets still available um, uh, right from sscarenabelfast.com, but uh, we'll see. Get, get them in quick, and if you can't make it down to the arena, we are live and exclusive on BT Sport. Uh, could I just say uh, just a quick, um, you know, uh, give, you know, I think with these guys up here um, and on the card on Saturday deserve a round of applause. There are 50-50 fights all night long. Michael Conlon's fighting a, you know, a former two-time world champion. So right down from Michael to all the televised fights, they are terrific quality boxing of boxing matches. And I think all the guys deserve a round of applause for taking these fights. Thank you very much for being here. And uh, those photographs coming up now, one-on-one -on -one interviews. So uh, don't go anywhere. It's still going to be interesting. <laughs>